What's up, YouTube? In today's video, we're gonna be looking at how you can find a geographical location just from an image. And we're gonna do that using a manual method, and then I'm gonna show you some tools that are available to do this as well. It's gonna be a really, really fun time. As always, if you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe, comment down below, all that fun stuff. We're actually gonna just jump right into this today and get started with some geographical OSINT. Okay, so about 10 hours ago, I posted on LinkedIn saying I wanted to do a video today on geo OSINT. And what I had in mind originally was I wanted people to just post their pictures like they're doing in here, and I wanted to take these photos and just try to find a location from them. However, I actually had a really good time finding one in particular, and I wanted to kind of touch on that a little bit today because I think it's a really good lesson. And then we're going to go into some more of these. I think we can do a video series on some of these concepts because you can find places and locations in many uniquely different ways. So we're going to take a look at this photo today. So Nick sent this photo in, and it looks like this. Now I'm going to open this up in my lovely photo editor here so I can actually just zoom in and look at it. And so we want to identify a few things right away because that's going to help us see, OK, what are we looking at? Maybe how can we identify this location? And some of you might be immediately looking at this license plate right here and saying, hey, they're probably in Virginia, which is the United States. And that would be a great first guess. However, it is actually incorrect. So we do have some clues here, right? We have something called drone up and we can see that drone up is here as well. So they are potentially a drone company of some sort and they're sitting in a parking lot somewhere and we see these cones and we see parking spaces. We can see some cars, right? And maybe we can identify some what of where we're at. So for example, what I like to do is look at what's around and I like to see, okay, where are the cars parked? Where are they driving? Is this on the right side of the road? It does look like it's on the right side of the road. We've got a stop sign. Uh, this is probably an indicator that we are in the US, right? And we can maybe even pull down a location a little bit easier. So a couple things here that I see. One is I see a logo that I'm actually familiar with. I'm not sure what this is right here. We'll talk about this in just a second. The other thing is we see a bird. And to me, this looks like a bird around the water, somewhere where there would be water, right? So like a seagull or something similar here. And hey, so we're looking maybe coastal, right? And Virginia is coastal. So we could be in Virginia. We could be somewhere else. We'll look at that. And you know why they call these seagulls, right? Because if they were by the bay, they would be bagels. Anyway, so we've got this logo over here. And if I zoom in, I can't read this. I'm not sure what that is. And you really can't read this either, right? So a little bit of finding this location was kind of based off of what I knew, but we could have found this regardless, and I'll show you that anyway. But this logo is very important. The other thing is we've got right here, drone up, okay? So we should be looking at that. In theory, we could research Continental Cargo and some of these other trailer things, but right now I wanna know where this company is, what they're doing, why they would be in a parking lot, and we can kind of go from there. Okay, so some quick research here found out that this company is working with Walmart to actually go in and deliver your groceries via a drone. It's kind of cool. And you can see they have their setup here. And this is a little bit different. They're in a parking lot as well, similar trailers. But this is more of a black covering where the other one was more maroon or red if we look at that. And maybe this is just color difference. Maybe these have faded, but this looks maybe a little bit different in color. So I don't think this photo is exactly the location, but it is interesting. Maybe we're seeing something different here, right? But uh, to me, this is a different location. And what we're going to do is in here, they actually kindly listed all of the locations of where they're offering this. Now, this took a little bit of research because this actually wasn't on the drone company's website. So I did a little bit of digging about this drone company and found out, OK, well, they're in Texas, they're in Florida, Arizona, Arkansas, Virginia, Utah and North Carolina. So if we're going with the beach theory, hey, Virginia Beach, OK, all three of these could be good. And then we've also got North Carolina, depending on where you're at, could be beachy. Uh, Utah has lakes. I don't know if they have seagulls, maybe. Um, Arkansas and then Arizona not so much but Florida Florida is very beachy as well so things to consider there but we had another clue in that picture and that is eyeglass world I recognize that logo 
Now, at first it threw me off because I'm used to seeing the logo exactly like this, right? This eyeglass world where it's on top of each other. And when I was looking at the logo here in the background, that's not what's happening, right? That is that logo to me. It looks very, very similar, uh, but it's a cross. So the first time I looked at this, I was like, oh, that looks like eyeglass world. But in fact, I didn't think it was. But then I went back again and I saw this logo right here. And I was like, yeah, you know what? They actually have a different variation depending on where you're at. So that's interesting. So then that leads me to, OK, well, where are the eyeglass worlds and where are they at in coordination with these Walmarts that are doing drone delivery? So we can start to find that out, right? We already know where the Walmarts are. OK, so the nice thing is eyeglass world tells you where all their stores are. Now, there are 151 locations all in the United States. So we are in the United States here. There are 36 locations for the drone company. So we know some of the states, right? We know Texas. We know Arizona here. Uh, we know Florida. So these are all possibilities. We don't think Arizona. I highly doubt Texas. Florida could be a good one. Virginia would be the other one. But Virginia is not a location where there's an eyeglass world. So that helps us eliminate actually Virginia. Uh, same with North Carolina here. That's eliminated. And so we almost immediately hone in on Florida as being coastal and being somewhere where there could be an eyeglass world where there's also a Walmart nearby. So the manual method of doing this would be going to Florida and saying, how many locations are there? Well, if there was like two or three, that would be fine. But what the heck? There's 45 of them inside of Florida. So what do we do instead? Well, we go back to the other website. And here we could do a quick compare and contrast. This is an alphabetical order, so I can see Claremont here. There's no Claremont here. Newport Ritchie could be a one, so we're going to look for Newport Ritchie. Sure enough, there is one. Go through this. Valrico, do they have that? No. So we can actually do a process of elimination here. Another Claremont, we know they don't have that. Winter Haven, not on here. Tampa, OK, probably a Tampa one. Let's see. Yep, there's two in Tampa. We've got a Brandon. Not on here. A Riverview. Let's see if that's on here. It is. And we have a Sefner, which I'm not seeing either. So immediately, we just narrowed this down from all of these locations to just having potentially four locations across three cities. So we've got this location right here, 3264 Word Way. And we can just copy and paste this right into Google Maps. And I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to come in here, hit that. We're going to take a look at this here. OK, so we are brought here, which is our supposed eyeglass world location. I am actually not seeing anything right here where it's saying that it is. But what we can do is we can actually click on layers here or hover over, go to more. And then if you scroll down, there's this globe view right here. If you check that even better, because now what you can do is hit control and actually kind of like zoom in and move around. And so you can see Sure enough, right there is an eyeglass world, right? So it is here, just a little bit mislabeled. But if we look around, if we look around, is there a Walmart nearby? Sure enough, there is a Walmart nearby. Now, we need to make sure that we're matching these two together. Does it make sense? Can we see the same location? The answer is yes, because it's right here. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. So let's go ahead and like zoom in, and then I'm just going to rotate this. And we actually found the drone up tent right here. And you can see the angle that we were at. If we kind of look at it like this, it was a little bit over here because what we were seeing was this right here, which what what is that? It's a Chipotle. Never would have guessed that it's a Chipotle. But here you can see the Chipotle, right? And then you can see the uh, the eyeglass world. We've got this Aussie grill right here. So there's quite a few things in this vicinity that actually line up. If we go back to the image, let's take a look. Hey, sure enough, that is Chipotle. And now to me, it looks like Chipotle now that I know, but it didn't ring a bell. For some reason, the eyeglass world came up first for me. So that is one way of how you can do this. Now, there are many ways I'm sure that you can do this. And maybe you noticed Chipotle. Maybe you noticed, hey, maybe one of the drinks back here, right? Maybe it has a specific logo or something that ties to a local area. But in reality, this is the way that I did it, and it's a valid way. But now I want to show you how you can actually use some tools to do this. But before we do that, I want to take a quick word from our sponsor for today's video, which is Keeper Security. 
presented by no other than the British TCM, Alex Olson. Keeper Security is a vendor that we've used for password and secrets management at TCM for quite some time. What's awesome is that they also do privileged access management and it's way more affordable than some of the big name vendors, which if you know us, you know that we're all about affordability. It was an easy yes for us when the partnership conversation happens because unlike legacy PAM solutions, Keeper is fast and easy to deploy, agentless and clientless and has no implementation fees. Plus, Keeper is FedRAMP authorized. If you're looking for a new solution to protect your organization, check out keeper.io forward slash TCM and schedule a quick demo with that awesome team. Okay, so one of the best tools that we can actually use is a tool called Overpass Turbo. Now, what this does is allows us to do really a lot of things, but what I'm looking for here is the idea of, hey, how do I maybe find a Walmart that is near an eyeglass world? Maybe we're thinking about it differently, right? Maybe I didn't want to go look up or maybe there were a lot of locations and I really just wanted to narrow it down as quickly as possible. OK, I want to look for these eyeglass worlds near Walmart. And so we can come in here and we can paste this. And this is just a little script that I typed up. And so you do have to learn there is a big learning curve for overpass turbo. But thankfully, if you aren't familiar, you can use something like chat GPT to generate prompts. It is not great. In my opinion, it's better to kind of learn this and then figure it out. A lot of Googling can get you there as well. But what I'm going to show you and why I'm doing this, we'll take a look in just a second, is we are going to look for something with the name of Aussie Grill, which is what we saw. And we want that near shop of Walmart. OK. And then we're going to say, hey, I want to find any Aussie grill. And if I do find the Aussie grill, I'm going to store it in this variable. I call the eyeglass world. So that's EGW. So and then I want to say, hey, if it's near a shop that has the approximate name of a Walmart, this is not a direct equals. It's approximate here, right? So this could be like Walmart, Walmart Supercenter. There's a bunch of different Walmarts around. So I don't want to like be very specific here. And then I just want to say around 500 meters. That was pretty close, that distance. I would say it's anywhere from two to 300 meters, but 500 meters just to be safe there. And we're going to take a look and see what happens. Now, you do have to come in here and type in. I'm just going to type in Florida for this one. You could type in the United States. I'm showing you this a little bit more for speed purposes, but you can extract this a little bit differently. You can go global, you can go whatever size you want, but the more you can narrow it down, the better off it'll be. So if you are in a situation where you're saying, hey, I think this is in Florida, I think I want to find any eyeglass world near a Walmart in Florida, you can come in here and do this pretty quickly. I'm going to show you why I'm using Aussie Grill here in just a second. So let's run this. Should take just a second here. OK, and we get an error here, and I want to point this out. Sometimes on our queries, if they're too big, they could air out. And so you can see it lasted 30 seconds here, and it aired out. So what I'm going to do is just put a longer timeout in here. I'm just going to add a couple of zeros. I'm going to run this, and then I'm going to just do magical editing and come back. OK, and we're back. So come in here, and we actually find this location, which is guess where? The same location, OK? So it found the one area where this Aussie grill is next to a Walmart. It took about a minute. Not bad. There's that Chipotle, all that fun stuff. The problem is there is actually no location here of the eyeglass world. It just doesn't exist in this map. Now, if we were to run this for eyeglass world, it would actually show up with several locations. For some reason, this data doesn't have it yet. So unfortunately, we uh, we don't have an eyeglass world here and that's OK, but we can find this. So just depending on what you're looking for, we could put Chipotle in here and do the same thing. This is great. It's not perfect, right? If we could only find the eyeglass world, maybe we miss this if we don't do a manual method. So again, it's about the methodology, not the tool. If you've ever taken a class with me, you've probably heard me say that a million times. It is about the methodology. So just understanding what we're doing and why we're doing it. Very important. OK, so another tool that does incredibly similar things is this Bellingcat OpenStreetMap or OSM. Now, OpenStreetMap is actually the same thing that is being used by Overpass Turbo. It's just, hey, this is writing out queries a little bit easier if you're not as comfortable with programming. But you can come in here and say, hey, I'm looking for something, right? Like I'm looking for a specific type of feature and it could be building or highway or whatever it might be. 
And then you can give conditions here and values and add that in. And then you can sort by, hey, what's the distance between these features that you're looking for? Where are you looking for that at? And you can get similar results. Now it does look at OSM, looks at Google and other things as well, but pretty neat if you wanted to use this instead of using the programming way, which is fine as well. And if you look hard enough, there are even tools on GitHub that can do this for you. This one is called GeoPincer, and I actually thought it was pretty good. And this looks at locations, right? And you can look for things that are near each other. So if you're looking in the state of Texas, for example, for an Office Depot and a Sam's Club, that's an example that it gives here. Same thing, default is 500 meters. You can put your distance in here. You can put US, you can put regions, whatever you want to do. It's actually really nice. And so I ran this script. It did take about 20 minutes. And this looked for, hey, anywhere in the US where there is a Walmart and an eyeglass world. And sure enough, it gives you the locations. Believe it or not, look at all these similar ones. These are all in Florida, right? So there's a lot of eyeglass worlds nearby uh, the Walmarts in Florida, especially. So it gives you locations for this and it's actually pretty cool. So neat tools, again, many different ways to do this. You just have to choose your own flavor. So that's really it. We were able to take a picture of a parking lot, use a few clues that we saw within the picture, and we're able to find a location within just a few minutes. We did that manually with using tools. We can find it even faster. And that just allows us to be that more robust with our skill set. And honestly, we're just scratching the surface with what we're capable of doing with tools like this that are scraping map data and other things. I just showed you the very, very basics. There's so many more fun and complex things that we can do with this. And I would love to do that in more videos. Let me know if you're interested in seeing that down below. If you're interested in learning OSINT and open source intelligence like this, we've got a ton of videos on our channel. We've got some free OSINT material. We also have our academy, which I'll link in the description below, that does have OSINT courses. We're also doing an OSINT live stream about a week from today, which will be on August 8th at 12 o'clock Eastern time. So if you want to join us for that, that'll be over at the academy as well. And until next time, my name is Heath Adams, aka The Cyber Mentor, and I really do thank you for joining me. Peace out.